Ryan opened his eyes, blinking in the bright light. Looking around, he found himself in a small room. More of a cage, really. There was a pad he was laying on, a hole in the corner that was probably a toilet, and the door was made of bars. The last thing he remembered was being out camping. Then a blinding light came from the sky. Had he been abducted? A strange, warbly voice rang out. Welcome, human, to my lab. I apologize for what has happened to you and what will happen. However, your death will serve a glorious purpose. Ryan rolled his eyes. It sounded like this was going to be unpleasant. The voice continued. My government's military has tasked me with developing the perfect killing machine, capable of defeating any species in the galaxy. Pitting it against you will allow me to test and refine it, and one day it will serve as the frontline soldier for our glorious conquest. Be honored, human, for you have been given the chance to be part of something great for the first time in your life. With a clang, the door of Ryan's cage popped open. Stepping out, Ryan found himself in a simple metal corridor, stretching out in either direction, a handful of cameras visible on the walls. Whatever species this alien was, it must be fairly short. Ryan could easily touch the ceiling. And if he could touch the ceiling, that meant... Pulling off a shoe, Ryan used it to smash the closest camera. Advanced alien tech, same fragile camera lenses. Your gesture of defiance is worse than useless. You will still die, and I will simply have to recruit additional humans to compensate for the lost data, the voice warbled. Ah, is someone's plan not going how they expected? Ryan mocked. As the brief conversation happened, Ryan moved further down the corridor, breaking cameras as he went. Turning the corner, he found himself in an open room. The most obvious difference here was the multicolored stains, as if someone had spilled various liquids and left them to dry. Liquids like alien blood. Ryan did his best to ignore the ominous splatters and smashed the two cameras on opposite sides of the room. As he did this, he heard a snuffling sound behind him. Looking over his shoulder, Ryan found himself facing a large canine. And here it is, the voice chuckled. The ultimate killing machine. I am disappointed I won't be able to watch, but it does bring me joy to know your fate is sealed. Ryan frantically searched for his pockets as the beast crept closer. He had been camping. He was wearing cargo pants. He had to have something. Then, in the last pocket, he felt a small bag. Pulling it out, Ryan found himself looking at beef jerky. Well, the ultimate killing machine did look like a canine. Taking a piece and holding it out, Ryan soothed the creature. Hey, boy. I bet you're hungry, aren't you? Want some jerky? It's fresh from Earth. The dog sniffed at the offering, before snatching it up and loudly chewing. It looked up, tilting his head at Ryan expectantly. You want more? Yeah, that's fine. You can have it all if you promise not to eat me, he cooed, pulling out a few more pieces. As the creature began chewing the new snack, Ryan reached his hand out, scratching behind his ears. You're just a big softy, aren't you? The dog whined in agreement closing his eyes as Ryan kept scratching his head. You got a name, boy? Ryan asked, looking at the collar. P1T0. Hmm, not much of a name. How about Pinto? Woof! Pinto barked. All right then, Pinto. Now that we're friends, let's find a way out of here. Ryan stood up. Well, there's two ways out of this room. One just leads back to my cage. Let's try the other one. Ryan started walking down the next corridor, Pinto padding along beside him. After passing through several identical corridors, the pair came to a simple door. Opening it, Ryan found what appeared to be a control center of some kind, various monitors displaying the rooms and corridors he had just passed through. Standing in the corner was some sort of avian creature, trembling. How? You're supposed to be dead! I made the perfect killing machine! The creature stammered. Simple, Ryan replied. I'm a dog person, and this ship now belongs to me.